What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out kind of an interesting little title. It's called Rogue State Revolution. This is a game that's effectively like a roguelike if you boil it down by all of its parts, but it's a game where you're running a Middle Eastern country that's part of a transitional government. So the people of your country have recently overthrown the king, and you are now the head of the transitional government, and effectively your job is to manage kind of all of the various subtypes of people that live inside your kingdom so that you can maintain power, not have all the various states that comprise your kingdom turn into sort of like rebel states and basically move things towards peaceful resolution. Uh, why is the game called Rogue State? Well, because it's kind of a roguelike in all honesty. It's like a roguelike country builder where when you lose and your entire sort of kingdom collapses, you unlock more stuff the next time around so that you can do better. The closest thing that I could really compare it to is probably like, if you guys ever played Rebel Incorporated, it's kind of similar to Rebel Incorporated, but with way, way, way more depth. So if you ever wanted a game that was like Rebel Incorporated, but with way more stuff, like basically a big injection of like Stellaris or like Crusader Kings on in there, but still not quite as complicated as those two games, it sort of exists inside the amorphous state that's in between the Rebel Incorporated mobile game and Super Deep X games. Uh, like Crusader Kings effectively. So anyways, we're gonna dive on in today We're gonna take a look at the game for about 30 minutes and see if it's something that you wanted to add to your wish list If after watching this this turns out to be something that you wanted to do I'll have a link for you down below in the description You'll find that next to my social media You'll find that next to my discord and you'll also find that next to my twitch stream where I'm live most days of the week Let's dive straight on in because there's gonna be a fair bit of things that I have to explain to you along the way uh, but like it's gonna be a wordy episode and I'm sorry for that. It's just this is a complicated game It took me the better chunk of the weekend to sort of like learn how to play it effectively and like do a good job And so you know uh, this is where we got to choose our difficulty So the game comes in three different difficulties teach me how to play which is actually this is the default difficulty This is a hundred percent difficulty. This one right here is basically hard It's hundred and thirty percent difficulty and this one is like really really difficult uh, We'll go ahead on the normal difficulty for right now we're going to get rid of all of the cutscenes, the news updates. I'm going to leave the subtitles on. I'm going to get rid of the guided start and the advisor help because I know what I'm doing. You can also tailor things right here if you wanted to, like, keep it a little bit harder. Basically, you can make your own custom difficulty by moving the sliders around, too, if it's the sort of thing that suits your fancy. If there's certain things that you end up not liking about the game, you can disable those entirely. This is a very customizable experience straight, straight off from the beginning of the game. In addition, there's some interesting stuff you can kind of disable over over here on the side. While this is kind of a serious government building running a country game, there's also a lot of humor to it and I think that's going to attract a lot of people to the title. So for example, on one hand you might be trying to figure out what you want to do with like a minority religion inside of your country, whether banishing them or, you know, repressing them or encouraging them or whatever else. There's definitely some dark topics in here. You can also have your country invaded by genetically engineered chickens. Uh, you can run your coffers into the ground researching giant mech warrior robots to invade your neighbors. Uh, you can also spend a huge amount of your time turning a fat chunk of your population into American Ultra style sleeper cell super soldiers. Like, you can do all kinds of goofy sort of tongue in cheek stuff. It's got a fair dose of Tropico in there, I guess, amidst all the seriousness. And I don't think I've ever seen a game walk the tightrope so well between serious subjects and also being like really really humorous at the same time uh, we'll go ahead and start it on off what is our name going to be I am going to be President Splat and President Splat will never let you down okay I'm gonna run this country so good you're gonna be like damn how we run this country so good <laughs> Alright, so the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to select our potential ministers. This is actually going to be a very important decision because it's going to decide how the game unfolds. We have two advisors. We have Yusef, who is our military advisor, and then we have Sabria, who is effectively our civics advisor. Both these people are going to be giving you sort of hints and tips and sort of like Rome Total War style being like, My lord, I think you should do this! And then you can decide if you want to do that or if you want to be like, away from me, pleb, and then continue padding your slush fund at the expense of the UN. Uh, we've got a couple of advisors here, and they need to fill up some slots. Uh, we've got Tariq Badur, who is a religious liberal. Uh, he's a maverick. Uh, so effectively, that means that he is going to embezzle small amounts of money every single month. But when he researches upgrades for his department, it will only cost favors, never cash. 
Uh, we've got Madiha over here, who is philanthropic but also an addict. What that effectively means is that she's going to disappear for like a month or two at a time on like a massive coke binge. And while she's doing that, all of your approval in her area will basically fall off. I don't know why that's my fault that she's decided to go on a massive drug, bi drug binge, but apparently they blame it on me. However, she also has philanthropist, which means that her... Her ministry that she's in charge of is free. It will never cost you any money. Uh, we have Suleiman, who is popular. That means that you get a bonus to your acceptance in whatever province you put him inside of. Or you, you get a bonus from his province if you give him a ministry position. There we go. He's also selfish, which means that if you ignore any of his requests, he's going to be like, hey, we want a soccer stadium. And you don't build a soccer stadium, he's going to be really, really, really upset with you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make him the Minister of Finance. That sounds good. Uh, we also have Adnan Bilal. He is a resourceful moron. Uh, basically, if you have any events that involve his ministry, he gives you bonus options that allow you to resolve that in a much more satisfying way. However, he's also an idiot, which means his research goes really, really slowly. Uh, so we'll put him in charge of justice. Sounds good. Uh, we have Nadir Adad. He's an inspiring guy. And so anyways, all of the civilian units that are specific to his department get a free upgrade to a tier higher than they are in. But he's in poor health, which means he can die at any time or not at all. We'll put him in charge of the Ministry of Defense. He's got a military outfit on. Obviously, that's where he goes. Uh, we also have Naur Al-Hadi who is pious and tactless. I never take her because every single month she makes all your other ministers hate you. And so it snowballs out of control pretty quickly. Uh, we've also got Aziz El Kamali. Uh, he's frugal and he's cunning, so construction costs are lower for him. But he's also cunning, which means that he's going to randomly swap your researches on you for no reason whatsoever, and he's not going to tell you. So you got to keep an eye on him. I'll put him in charge of the Ministry of Development, and then we'll get the game started. So here we are. Welcome to Basenji. This is the country that we now are in charge of. We're the president of it. It's divided up into a number of provinces. We've got, uh, I can't see the name of that one. We've got Banifa, Ramai, Saba, Karif, and then this guy right here is Karik. This is the explanation portion of the video, and I'm sorry for that, but this is where I've got to like teach you how to play the game, otherwise you're going to have no idea what's going on. So let's start from the right and we'll work our way down. Over here on the right, you've got your provincial menu. All those provinces that I just listed off, they have needs. Those needs are listed on the right. They are subdivided into prosperity, safety, health, entertainment, education, and then environmental. And then you've got your approval rating inside that area based on how well you provide these things. If they are written in white, that's a good thing. If they are written in orange or they are written in red, that's a really, really bad thing. And that means that your approval rating is going to continue to drop there because the people that live inside those provinces are going to have pressing concerns about your reign that you need to resolve. If these fall too low and your approval rating gets too low, you risk having a rebellion or you're going to end up having some kind of like Al-Qaeda cell. Like starting off inside of there, they'll start bombing things and blowing things up it's really not something that you want to deal with because it's going to put you into a state of internal strife that in turn is going to make international superpowers very very upset with you uh, it's gonna make the UN upset with you you kind of you don't want to be a state that's considered kind of like a failing state you want things to be kind of working copacetically so that other nations will help you and start trade deals with you and stuff like that underneath that we have our resource production resources subdivided into five categories we've got food supply we've got ourselves processed food supply we've got household appliances we've got consumer electronics and we've got luxury goods and of course there's things that feed into those that are kind of like sub products like ingots of copper and stuff like that we have our money this is how much Basenji bucks we have in order to grease palms, pay bribes, make things happen, construct buildings, all that fun stuff. This is our intelligence right here. Our intelligence effectively is going to let you get insights into the desires of your neighbors and, you know, economic superpowers. And then we have our power grid, which is actually like non-functioning right now. Uh, we've also got a bunch of tabs right here, but I'll kind of explain these as we get to them because they're not pertinent right now. We've got our skip turn button right here where we want to move on to the next month. 
Over here, we've got our map. We've got various overlays that we can fiddle around with to decide what we want to do. Uh, we've got our palace, which we can snap to right here, which is actually really, really useful. There's our palace in Majamara. And then we've also got our refineries. We've got our power plants and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we got to get the power grid up and running. So if you take a look at the power grid over here, the power grid is offline because it's not connected with roads. And so we have an oil refinery which feeds into a power plant. That's going to be our first production chain. But it's not exactly working right now, so we need to build some roads. Uh, you get four actions per turn. Anything that's got a little clock next to it is going to cost you basically. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll make a road over here that connects this village with that right there. And then we'll also make another road that connects to the power plant right there. And as you can see, we fixed our production line right there. We have 100 power and 62 of it is being used. Uh, the next thing we kind of want to take heed of is that we want to go to the palace and we want to train a surveyor. The surveyor is going to go around and find raw resources for us. Things like oil, gold, copper, Things like that that we can use to kind of decide what our economy is going to look like. And it's going to allow us to start trade with our neighbors. Because as of right now, we have no money coming in. Like, absolutely zero money. Uh, the other concern that I would look at is our food supply. Right now, we have 49 food demand. And all 90 of our food is being produced by UN aid camps. That's a bad thing. We don't want the UN aid camps to be around because the UN aid camps, while they supply us with free food, they also lower the prosperity of any area that's surrounding. So you see how green is kind of like orange on prosperity right now? If we get rid of this UN camp, it'll go up to like white prosperity and like that's fine. Uh, so we'll work on that in just a second, but let's get our resource surveyor. He's now over here and if we click on him, we can actually see where resources are at. Unfortunately, our, our palace is in kind of like a bad area. I wish our palace was up here because then we could knock out a lot of this all in one swing. I'm going to send him over there. It's going to take him four turns to arrive. That means we're going to have to come up with a contingency plan for how we're going to make money. So let's take a look at our neighbors in our diplomacy menu. We are neighbored by Kalshara. We are neighbored by Axtajan. And we are neighbored by Chikenistan. Apparently, I feel kind of nervous about Chikenistan. They look like they're ready to buck. But anyways, uh, we wanted to look at their demands. Like, what do they have that we can potentially supply them with? And what I was looking for here was food. Unfortunately, they don't really want raw food, so that's unfortunate. But they do want gold ore, they want bauxite, they want household goods, they want luxury goods. These guys want consumer electronics, they want food. Okay, we could probably export some food to them, and we can export some food to them. So I take it back. We do actually have food available. How do we get that food? Well, we get that food by building farms, and we've got two turns left, so I suggest we do that right now. Uh, so we're going to make agricultural fields. These are going to cost us $30 right here, but if we can get them into a good spot like right there and then like right here, we can start alleviating our food requirements so that we can get rid of those UN aid camps and start cleaning up these areas. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll build two of those for right now. It's going to take these a little bit to spin up and become stronger. Uh, so they're not going to produce on their absolute first turn, but next turn they'll be able to do so. The other thing we want to do is we want to take a look at our ministers, and we kind of want our ministers to be working on something. So right now we're prioritizing cars and making sure that things are moving around the way we want them to. That's fine. I'm okay with that. We can get bus fleets going. That'll make urban people happier. It'll make liberals happier. It upsets conservatives and it makes the environment a little bit nicer. That sounds okay to me. Uh, we can also remove the speed limits, which, you know, will increase our entertainment rating, which... Our entertainment rating is okay in some certain areas. We'll start that off. We'll get rid of speed limits, dude. We don't even need that. Uh, over here with our military, we can get conscription. Uh, we can get long-range missiles. We can work on mech warrior machines. As you can see, it's got a little catapult right there for its logo. We can work on centrifuges so that we can make nuclear weapons. Uh, we can do recon training, which increases the line of sight for all of our military units. I would suggest that we do that. It's probably a really, really good start, especially since I like to use tanks and mortars. Uh, we've got our justice department. We can decriminalize soft drugs. And honestly, really what we need to do is we need to take a look at all of our villages and figure out or all of our cities and figure out what the split is here. So this place is basically kind of a liberal bastion. There's only a couple of conservatives here. You can actually take a look at the general population by clicking on these cities and then going through them. So everybody over here is pretty liberal. Uh, we don't have to worry about taking policies that upset conservatives. These guys are all conservative. Okay, good to know. Over here on this side, it looks like 
they're probably going to be mostly liberal since it's a bigger city. These guys are probably going to be liberal as well. Actually, it's a conservative city. Okay. Sounds good. Over here in Cheddar, uh, we've got liberals, kind of a 2-3 split. Like, honestly, I think we'll kind of, like, figure it out. Uh, let's go ahead and skip our turn for... Well, I'm not going to skip our turn. Let's go ahead and... We'll decriminalize alcohol. That sounds like a good place to start. And then over here inside of our Ministry of Finance, I'm going to suggest... I'm going to suggest we work on tax credits first so that we can invest more money into fixing problems should it come up. I was kind of looking at it for a minute trying to decide what I wanted to do, but everything comes with considerable like problems. It's going to upset certain subgroups of people. And so for right now, until we get ourselves settled, I'd like to avoid that. So let's go ahead and skip to the next month and we'll see what happens. We may have some events that we need to resolve. Uh, apparently we have met Chikenistan. And so Emperor Rusty the First wants something. Apparently we're friendly with Chikenistan, so that's good. We'll keep the chickens on our side for right now. Uh, first thing we want to do is let's get our surveyor and we'll have him continue moving towards this destination over here. Uh, the faster he does that, the better. So off he goes. He's got two turns until he arrives at this first resource spot. Our food has come through, and so it looks like actually our food for right now is going to be coming from... Actually, we're producing all of our own food for right now, so we can start getting rid of some of these UN camps. So I'm going to make Faya a little bit nicer. Uh-huh, this place is going to be the Faya. Uh, people get a little bit upset when you do this because there's going to be, like, logistical issues that start up. Don't worry about that too much. It's going to kind of, like, fix them in the end, I promise. We've got multiple UN camps over here, so we'll go ahead and get rid of both of the UN camps that are inside this area. So, yeah, that'll fix up green. Green should go up to five prosperity pretty soon, and then we can work on things that make their environment a little bit better. Uh, Karif... We can get rid of the UN camp over here, I think. So there we go. We've gotten rid of the aid camp in Karif. And we've got, you know, 64 food coming in. We're producing all of our own food, though. So honestly, I could probably bulldoze all of these if I wanted to. Saba's looking okay, so we don't have to bulldoze them just yet. These guys are looking okay right now. Oh, yeah, by the way, you can get, like, super, super detailed regressions of everything that's going on just by clicking around. We'll get rid of their UN camp, though, too, just to kind of make these things a little bit better. Now, we're earning money, so we're that's good. We're, we're like, in the black right now, so we're making money. Uh, we're not quite ready to export food yet. Let's start looking at what we can do to make these areas nicer. So in Saba, inside of Saba, they've got health concerns. So my advice would be, we find one of these large cities, and if you look at these citizens, they say they're getting sick again. That, to me, makes me think that we need to build a hospital over here. So let's get a hospital going. The hospital should be, let's see here, Hospital, where are you? So the hospital's going to cost us 38 bucks. It's also going to cost us six workers. That's rough, because we don't have, like, a lot of workers in this area. But it is going to fix a principal problem that they have, which is that their health concerns are, like, really, really bad. And so, in doing that, we've now increased them up to a three. Things are going to be looking a little bit better on this side. They could also use some more entertainment, but when we decriminalize liquor, that's going to raise the entertainment level of all of these locations. And it should be okay. Uh, they also have health concerns over on this side. I would suggest that upgrading the hospital is the best way to fix this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use a favor from our finance minister or our development minister to get that done. So we now have a very, very nice hospital in this area. Uh, that should assist with making public health a little bit better. It's going to take a couple turns in order for that to fully unfurl, but it should be all right. Now, the other thing that I would suggest doing is we should probably make some food, and we should probably make that food, like, over here. Because uh, I'm planning on exporting some of this food on the next turn. Uh, we're going to be a big food exporter for right now. And I'd like that to be like a lot of food that we can export so that we can make some more money. So I'll go ahead and plop that over there too. So we've got a few more agricultural fields. This is also going to help us out by all these outlying villages right here. They're going to like us a little bit more. Apparently, Basenji Citizen, Basenji Citizen, they don't like our cultural stuff, but we don't have a citizenship board just yet, so unfortunately, I don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, what's going wrong with this over here? 
Nothing. It just wants me to decide on the split of where all the oil is going. Okay, that's fine. Are we producing any extra oil? Like, how much oil does this produce? So this is producing about 100 oil. And this is using, it can use 140 foof. Okay, never mind. So we've got to, we can't really export any oil for right now. That's going to be a bad plan that's going to get us into trouble. If there's any things that we want to prioritize around here, we can do that now. So rural approval is going to be upset with us if we go with sustainability. Uh, we can get regulated internet. We're censoring the internet right now. Uh, we can go with Basenji net. So access to the global internet is forbidden. Or we can have, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll go with open internet for right now. I'm going to make the internet open and we'll kind of deal with that as we go. Public safety is going to take a little bit of a hit, but we'll kind of deal with that as it comes along. Excellency, a network of extremely wealthy environmentalists from Majimara are purchasing large connected parcels of rural land in Saba in an attempt to drive away locals and create a wild nature preserve. Residents in the region are asking that we pass a new law protecting their governance over where they live. Uh, so we can side with the environmentalists. Uh, we do have environmental problems. Let's see here. So provincial statistics. Is Saba one of the places where we're having conservation issues? It is a place where we're having conservation issues. So this is kind of an easy out to fix one of our problems right there. So there you go. Uh, unfortunately, rural people are going to be very, very upset with me. The upshot is that I just built a bunch of farms. So that should offset it like a little bit. Like it should make things a little bit better. All right. So in Saba, we're now producing just an ass ton of food at the moment. So let's get rid of every remaining UN camp. So there is one in Saba, so that's got to go. That'll ease up on the concerns that some of the people are having right now because they are complaining about the presence of the UN camp. And then are there any other UN camps that I have failed to get rid of just yet? Good. All right, so let's go to our diplomacy. we got to start earning some money. We're not making any cash right now. Uh, Chikenistan wants food, so let's call them up, and we're going to negotiate a trade deal. We're going to offer to export food. We only need, like... There we go. Let's export food to them, but we've got to connect this with a road. That'll give us nine bucks a month. I'm going to propose it. They're happy with it. Very, very nice. In addition, I'm also going to call up Axtajan, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So I'm suggesting that we export 30 units of food. So that's 75 units of food out. We still have a surplus of like 80. That should be good enough for industry, but we have a poor relationship with these guys. So I'm trying to like forestall war. I don't want to end up in a war with our neighbors if I can help it right now. Chicken pock or? I think it just clucks and they pretend they understand what it's saying. So this is what? A big joke? Everybody's in on it? Yeah, but they're so in on it that it's not a joke anymore. How long do chickens live? I think they just replace the chicken every few years and hope nobody notices. I would notice. I know you would notice yourself. I know. So you get those little like old school SimCity FMVs that pop up from time to time when events take place. Uh, so Kalshara's up there. I think we did a trade deal with Axtajan and Chikenistan. So we need to connect a couple roads so that we can start exporting and get our money. Uh, this is going to run through Kaifal over here. So we're going to go ahead and put a road on that side. I'm not going to upgrade it just yet because I don't feel like... Well, I'll upgrade it. Why not, dude? There we go. We'll make it a nicer road. And that should increase the amount of money that we're making. We're getting 12 to 22 for right now. And then we also need to connect Chikenistan down here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that right there. And we will upgrade that road as well because the money that we're going to make out of this, dude, we're basically like printing our own currency right now. Like we're making a lot of money. So this is going to be pretty rad. He didn't like replace the speed limits, did he? Okay. Like that's fine. Like nothing bad will ever come of replacing our speed limits with no speed limit. It's going to be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and take him over to here. Excellency. Yes, I am your excellency. Go ahead and travel on over there. Go ahead. Excellency. Very well. 
There we go. You gotta drag it a little bit. I have had a couple bugs with this game, so I'll talk about the quality of the game. I have had a couple of bugs on the in-between turn with the automated moving, so if you if you queue them up to move like seven spaces, like seven turns worth of distance, I've had it freeze up on me a couple times. On some of the units, they seem to get stuck, so keep that in mind. There is like a bug on in there that I've run into numerous times. Uh, we have one clock left. We need to survey right here. There's no nerf- Aw, dude, there's no, there's no resources there. That's upsetting. All right, well, you go over to there on the next turn, then. Rebels are holding a number of elementary school children hostage in Karif. They are demanding the release of political prisoners and money. We can negotiate and release the hostages. We can negotiate the release of the hostage, then execute the political prisoners. So that's the extra option we get right there from the guy that we chose. I'm going to do that. So there you go. It's a happy resolution. Excellency, everybody wants a public garden in Saba. Okay, I do have some extra money. Do I have a public garden over here? There's the public garden. It's going to cost us some money, and it's got upkeep, but he's the guy that gets super pissed if we don't give him the thing that he wants, so there you go. I've done the thing that you desire. I have spent money from the communal coffers. You can be happy now. And so, oh, cool, we unlocked a new policy, and we got a favor with the minister. Very nice. Excellency, I want to thank you for building the public garden. My constituents in Saba appreciate that you are addressing their needs. Cool. And then the freedom of the German highway combined with the skills of a Basenji driver. This can't fail. All right. So that is done, and we can activate, and we can disable that as well as we see fit. Uh, the other thing that we can do is... Let's take a look at Saba and see how we're doing with people. So right now with rural people, we're like, okay, we're at like 41%. We could do better with rural folks though. So I'm thinking what I'd like to do here is let's go ahead and do rural internet access. We've got a budget surplus anyways, and it's got no downsides aside from the fact that it costs money, so like I'm okay with it. Recon training's still going through, decriminalizing alcohol is still being worked on. Looks good to me. I think we should be all right. Uh, if we could get something that increases prosperity over here, that'd be good. Let's look at our construction. So we've got a stadium over here. We've got a market. That'll increase prosperity. It's going to cost us workers, though. Uh, yeah, put in a market over on this side. Yeah, we'll have a market on that side. That looks good. So that should help us out with prosperity in the blue area. Uh, for the green area, we need the same thing. So I would suggest we maybe think about doing that over here, too. We are costing ourselves a little bit of money right now, but I'm, like, weirdly okay with it. So let's go with a market over here, too. I mean, if it fixes a problem, it fixes a problem, okay? And that's really kind of what I'm looking for, is to fix problems. Uh, safety is a concern in Saba, as is health. It's unfortunate that we haven't really gotten the bonus that I'm looking for to fix health over here, and we're so low on workers. Workers don't really increase on any of these cities unless you have an immigration policy, and the immigration policy comes with its own downsides because, like, you're going to end up with... So this game has its own version of, like, the Sunnis and the Shiites. Uh, we have kind of, like, a Shiite majority right now, and, like, Sunnis are going to start coming from neighboring provinces or chickens in the case of Chikenistan, and we're going to have to figure out chicken rights, and we're going to have to figure out, like, Sunni rights once we kind of like pop the cork on that bottle and so it can be sort of problematic uh, let's go ahead and move these guys over to here we'll keep him cruising yep keep on rocking we got to find some natural resources uh, never otherwise otherwise we'll never have any real form of industry and we're going to have big issues uh, so we'll put him over there he does have a clock left how much further oh he's on top of it right now all right survey it uh, we found a deposit of gold ore is anybody importing gold right now? Does anybody like gold? Ah, Kalshara does. And we're kind of frosty with Kalshara. So we may want to capitalize on this about as soon as possible. A freighter containing contaminated plastics previously destined for the Philippines has returned to our shores. The captain states the foreign ports are no longer accepting the toxic waste from our nation. Okay. Um, we're going to lose some environmental quality for a little bit. We can quietly dump them into the Indian Ocean illegally, which will make all the international powers upset with us. Oof. Neither of these options are great. 
All right, well, we'll go with that one for right now, but it's going to hurt. Yeah, we have big problems. So what we need to do now is we need to review the budget, and we need to figure out a way to offset this using our surplus. This is the budget menu. You can basically dedicate money to, like, fix problems and add pips to these various meters right here without actually, like, building or doing anything. Uh, I do suggest that you do that. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Hold on. So there goes all of our super awesome money that we were earning, but I should be able to recoup some of the costs by making the gold mine and exporting the gold, I think. We should be able to bring in like another 16 bucks a month so we can fiddle with the budget a little bit further. But we really just kind of need to like offset this situation. Uh, it should be reflected on the next turn, so these should all go up by two, which means we should even out on most of these. But anyways, yeah, this is Rogue State Revolution. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let's take a look at the options menu before we bail on out. The options menu for right now, it looks like you can rebind some of the keybinds, but then again, the game doesn't really have that many keybinds. Uh, we can have the FMVs to show if we've never seen them before. Language options, it looks like we've got English, Spanish, Russian, French, and German right there, just in case you speak those languages and you want to play them in your home language. You've got the standard audio mixer settings right here uh, we can turn off the fog of war and fiddle with that if we want to and there's some light graphical options but sort of a utilitarian options menu right there uh, not a lot of accessibility options like colorblind mode stuff like that that's things that I would consider adding uh, my complaints with the game right now are kind of like limited uh, honestly they're limited to technical stuff like that bug that I've ran into where the game crashes uh, when you've got units moving automated at the end of the turn. Aside from that, it seems to be a game that's fairly well put together and has a lot of options and things to fiddle with along the way. Uh, so anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block. It was Rogue State Revolution. Tomorrow it will more than likely be something else. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all when we reconvene tomorrow. Bye, everybody.